Hey guys, what's up? My name is Marcy and welcome to Marcy's Hands. Today we're going to be taking a look at my second Campanatus Nicovarensis colony, with the only slight difference that this one will have two queens instead of just one. If you haven't seen the first colony with a single queen, then you're welcome to do so by clicking on the top right corner of the screen. The reason I got these two colonies of this species is for a simple reason. As I told you in my last video, there are many types of colony types, but the main two ones being monogenous and the other being polygenous. The first being a colony type where only one queen is seen per nest, and the second being a colony type where we can see several queens per nest. Now I wanted to conduct a little experiment of my own and wanted to see if an ant colony with two queens will evolve much faster than a single queen colony. Same species, same state of the colony, same age, and pretty much identical in any factor, except the number of queens, of course. Here, you can actually see footage of the colony moving into the new test tube. Had to make them move here because of, their previous war of, because of the previous test tube being so full of dirt. The company I get these hands from puts dirt in their test tubes. I asked them why, and they, why they did that, and they told me that it actually helps them the ants survive the whole delivery process. But I, don't, but I obviously don't like dirt in my test tubes. I like to see my ants, I like to video my ants and count them and count their brood and so on and so forth. So I decided to place them in a much cleaner test tube. Here, I'll show you how I did it. There are many methods to moving ants, as you might know. I will do a video on that soon enough anyways. The method I'm using right now is just forcing the ants out of their original test tube into a container and placing a suitable home for them. The container must have either a lid to close the ants and prevent them from escaping or an anti-escape solution. Personally, I've been using oil to prevent them escaping lately and it works just fine. You will have to choose different escape solutions for different species, whether they're smaller or bigger, etc. Once all of the ants are out, you just put a light above them and cover the new test tube or home with some red cellophane. As you might or might not know, ants can see their color red. And on top of that, they don't like light. And that's one of the reasons for the one they build underground tunnels in nature. So for us ant keepers, it is fairly easy to make them move since they don't like since they don't like light, we just gotta place a light on the area and we don't want them uh, on the area we don't want them to be and they'll just leave the place to a most suitable home, which is what I did here exactly. Depending on the species of ant, they are more or less tolerable, tolerable to light, therefore making it harder or easier to make them move. So I finally managed to put them all out and now I'm just gonna put a little bit of sugar water um, so they can just recover some of the strength and they lost due to stress since this method is very hard on the ants it creates a lot of stress um, so I'll just put um, some droplets of sugar water and I'm actually also gonna introduce a fly into the container for that extra protein for their larva and brood to develop properly As you can see, they have been together at the side of the container for a long time and they don't really move. They took over 24 hours to move and I couldn't record it all, but no worries, I will be prepared next time, I promise. Right, now that they have moved in, let's take a closer look at this colony of Campanotus nicobarensis. It is obviously a young colony. I suspect the workers we currently see here are of the first bunch of eggs that the two queens laid when they were first captured. The Campanotus genus is a huge one containing about 1,500 species and subspecies discovered to this day. They are distribu distributed pretty much throughout the whole world. Here in the distribution map you can actually see all the green areas is where Campanotus is native. Obviously different species and subspecies but the whole genus of Campanotus is dist distributed along those green areas. Orange areas such as the United Kingdom they are considered an exotic species and then obviously the black areas are there is no record of them. Camponotus, as we can see, is a huge genus, but considering that they are 1,500 species currently discovered, there are actually only 15 of them that are polygenous. But since we're looking specifically at Camponotus nicobarensis here, let's see where we can find them. Here's a distribution map of the species. As you can see, they're only found and only native to Southeast Asia. So without further ado, let's get back to our colony of two queens. 
By the way, if you want to know more about Campanatus necrobranchis and how to care for them, I comment this on my other video with the other colony. I'll put the link on the top right corner over here if you want to check it out. And this is pretty much it for this video guys. As I usually do, I'll put in some macro images for you guys to enjoy and some cool music. So you guys sit back, relax and yeah, enjoy the rest of the video.